to Nationwide on the Network Service of the Nigerian Television Authority, Amlami Ali. We begin with the judiciary, where the Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja declared Nasiru Yusuf Gauna of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as the duly elected governor of Kenu State. Judiciary correspondent Solabode Arewa reports. Governor Abba Kabiri Yusuf of the New Nigeria People's Party approached the Court of Appeal, seeking to overturn the judgment of the Kano State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal that sacked him from office. In that verdict, the tribunal declared Nasu Yusuf Gauna as the rightful winner of the March 18, 2023 election on the basis that the governor's name was not in the NMPP register as at the time of the election. This is in line with Section 177, Subsection C, of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, as well as Section 77 of the Electoral Act 2022. The tribunal had also deducted 165,663 votes belonging to the governor for being invalid votes as they were not stamped by INEC. But Governor Abba Yusuf appealed the tribunal's decision, pointing out what he termed as errors in the judgment and praying for his mandate to be restored. Governor Yusuf, through his counsel, formulated nine issues for determination in the appeal. One of the grounds of the appeal was that Gauna was not a party in the petition and therefore cannot benefit from the verdict. But the appeal court agreed with the arguments canvassed by Gauna and his party, the APC, saying that the appellant, Governor Yusuf, failed to adduce credible evidence to prove that he was an NMPP member as a candidate could only qualify to participate in an election only if he was sponsored by a political party and Governor Yusuf did not qualify as such. The appellate court thereafter affirmed Governor's victory as Governor-elect of Kano State awarding one million naira costs against Governor Yusuf in favor of the respondents. Meanwhile, the Court of Appeal has affirmed the victory of Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohamed in the governorship election held in the state in March 2023. The court, in dismissing the appeal filed by Sadiq Abubakar of the APC, held that allegations of overvoting were not supported by credible evidence. Olabo Darewa, NTA News. Now, ahead of the verdict of the Court of Appeal on the Kano State Governorship election dispute, the State Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Hussein Gumel, has superintended the signing of a peace accord between disputing parties. The State Police Command, in collaboration with other security agencies in the state, also carried out Operation Show of Force, an indication that they are ready to ensure peace and security in the state. Elizabeth Yila Lamido reports. It was a roundtable discussion at the Kano Police Command with representatives of the New Nigeria People's Party, NMPP, and the All Progressive Congress, APC. Also in attendance were heads of other security agencies in the state. The meeting is to ensure concession by both parties after the outcome of the appeal court's judgment by signing the peace accord. As far as APC is concerned, Nothing will happen tomorrow. Whether we're going to come out, uh, we are known for peace. The NDPP is a peace loving, loving party, and we promise to maintain peace and harmony here in Kano. The police, with sister security agencies, went on an eight-kilometer walk on the streets of Kano 
as a show of force. Today is not a speech making day, it is a day of action. Because our men are already on the ground. After this size, we are still going to reimpose those who are on the ground in order to ensure that what we promise the good people of Kano State is a reality. The security personnel have been stationed at strategic locations within the metropolis to douse any tension that could arise. In Kano, Elizabeth Yila, NT News. Abdullahi Mustafa is now standing by in Kenu for an update on the mood of the city after the appeal court verdict. Now, hello, Abdullahi. Good to have you join us on Nationwide. We want you to tell us how people are reacting on the outcome of the court of appeal with regards to the Kenu governorship election tussle and how the situation is presently in Kenu. Thank you, Laimi. Uh... As expected, uh, people here in Kano, uh, even long before the judgment uh, date was announced, people have been anxious to know what is going to happen. And uh, it just happened, as uh, reported in the first uh, item on the news. And uh, people were, some are uh, just uh, surprised with the outcome, while others are not, because of the, based on the uh, facts uh, uh, used uh, by the judges, to pass the judgment and uh, as uh, uh, previously in the morning people were apprehensive of even coming out because of what may likely happen uh, in the event of the outcome of the judgment uh, and uh, security operatives as uh, reported by Elizabeth we are going around some as we are stationed at various locations especially flashpoints uh, but now after the uh, judgment people uh, uh, we can say uh, have uh, uh, listened to the appeals by the security uh, political and traditional leaders to remain calm and uh, even yesterday there was another sp statement from the state commissioner for information Baba for the people of the state and uh, uh, members of the ruling party the NNPP to accept the verdict and uh, whatever the outcome the party will take uh, the necessary decision. So uh, it seems uh, as we are coming to this uh, place now here along Britlama Medway, we notice a significant improvement uh, in the turnout and movement of people. Because if it were in the morning, only few vehicles could be seen along this road, despite the fact that it is a major entry to Kano from uh, many northeastern states. This is uh, Britlama Medway leading to Hadeja Road. Uh, Jigawa, Yobe, Borno, and many other sects, including Bochi. So this is the situation is calm here. Everybody is going about his normal business, uh, uh, waiting to hear from the two parties what will be their reaction. Thank you very much, Abdullahi, for that update. Of the People's Democratic Party (PDP) is calling for the immediate disbandment of the Plaza State Election Appeal Court panel sitting in Abuja. The party's acting national chairman Umar Damagum was speaking at a media briefing in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. The Plaza State Election Appeal Court panel order a rerun where the PDP won and the APC came third. The acting national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Ambassador Umar Damagum, on the Plateau State Election Appeal Court sitting in Abuja, he noted its varying and contradictory judgments against the PDP, which according to it are also in conflict with the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, the Electoral Act 2022, and INEX guidelines and regulations for elections. The PDP also urges the CGN and the President Court of Appeal as very experienced judicial officers to set up a new panel and subject the biased judgment by the Plateau State Election Appeal Court panel to judicial review. Meanwhile, the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, has commended the Independent National Electoral Commission for upping its game 
in the just concluded off cycle elections in Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi states. Members chairing committee of the coalition, Emeka Igwe said, following a review of the elections and reports by various observer groups and CUPP members, especially party agents, there was a great improvement in the early arrival of INEC officials and election materials at polling units. The young Africa even confirmed in their reports that pre election projections and the ultimate outcome in Kogi substantially tally with INEC declarations. The coalition also commended security agencies for the prompt arrest of individuals who were seen to put security threats in the elections in the three states. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. A coalition of civil society organizations of Nigeria has appealed to Undo stakeholders to swiftly intervene in the political situation in the state and ensure temporal transfer of power to the deputy governor pending the full recovery of Governor Rotimi Akiridulu. The coalition was speaking against actions of some forces that have allegedly caused a vacuum in the state's apex office. Abubakar Akwanga reports. The coalition of civil society organizations says Governor Rotimi Akiridulu Hapsen should not be allowed to disrupt businesses of government and made a passionate appeal for the deputy governor to be temporarily transferred power on acting capacity in line with provisions of the constitution. The intent of the framers of our constitution in section 189, 190 and 191 is to avoid any kind of vacuum which is invariably affecting the entire citizens of Ondo states and that is why we were are acting as a voice of other citizens. Meanwhile, a new APC group tagged Consolidated APC Grassroots Movement has been unveiled. The group is to hit the ground running ahead of the next phase of presidential election come 2027. On behalf of the great men and women of Restructuring Committee, welcome you all to a new dawn in grassroots mobilization. Welcome to Consolidated APC Grassroots Movement, CAGRAM. Consolidated APC Grassroots Movement says it is determined to ensure that the movement remains strategic in mobilizing grassroots support beyond 2031. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NTA News. Now, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, has ordered that the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefele, be remanded in Kujay Correctional Center pending the determination of his request for bail. The presiding judge, Justice Hamza Muazu, gave the order in Abuja. With this ruling, Emefele will remain as the correctional center until November 22nd when the court will decide on his bail application. The lead counsel to Emefele, Matthew Boka, SAN, moved the application for bail which defense counsel Rotimi Oyedepo vehemently opposed on behalf of the federal government. After taking arguments for and against the application, Justice Moazo said a bench ruling could not be delivered in view of the plethora of authorities cited by the two parties. President Bola Tinubu will on Saturday depart Abuja for Berlin, Germany, to attend the G20 Compact with Africa Conference on November 20th, 2023, hosted by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. During the conference, President Tinubu will join other heads of state and governments of CWA member countries, bilateral partners, as well as heads of international organizations to deliberate on the immediate enhancement of economic and business cooperation with a view to outlining concrete measures to boost investments in areas of energy, trade, infrastructure, and new technologies. The G20 conference will be taking place alongside the fourth G20 investment summit, co-hosted by the German government and German business associations. This visit also affirms President Tinubu's commitment to a diplomatic reciprocity as the invitation to Germany from the German Chancellor is being honored following the visit of the German Chancellor to Abuja and Lagos, Nigeria last month. 
Nigeria and Germany being the largest economies in Africa and Europe, respectively, recorded an increase in bilateral trade volume from 2 to 3 billion euros between 2021 and 2022. The president will be accompanied by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Yusuf Tuga, the Coordinating Minister of the Economy and Minister of Finance, Mr. Waleadu, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Doris Uzokanet, and the Minister of Power, Chief Adebayo Adelabu. It's time now to join Adeola in Lagos for continuation of Nationwide. It's over to you, Deola. Thank you, Lamy. Nigeria's quest to accelerate economic growth through foreign direct investment is achievable if the potential in trade fair is well harnessed, especially the prospect of networking. Lynn Lenneke reports that experts emphasized the need for a friendly business environment to encourage investors. Trade fairs, like many other economic gatherings, provide ideal platforms for demonstrating innovation and taking competition head on, create high market transparency due to the many competitors represented, and reach out to lots of customers through effective communication. To facilitate the exchange of technical and commercial information and expansion of trade transaction in order to enhance the development of the national economy. Apart from being the huge commercial venture, the just concluded that the seventh Lagos International Trade Fair, adjudged to be the largest business market in ECOWAS sub region, showcased innovative and technological development. This is the importance of relationships and networking among businesses for what creation or for trade partnerships and for productivity growth. Trade fair also enables industry stakeholders brainstorm on how to market the potential of various sectors of the nation's economy. Many people will think that we don't have we don't manufacture anything, but with this exhibition, it has been shown that Nigeria is manufacturing so many items. The networking from other countries, of course, that's the gold essence of international trade fair. It's a kind of advertisement you are making here. People are, we know the quality of the product. The company is right here at the trade fair. For nations' economy to gain more mileage, experts unanimously agreed that trade fairs and other trade exhibitions should be packaged in line with global best practices, while more attention should be placed on made in Nigeria products. In Lagos, Lynn Lenaki, NTN. And talking health, early exposure to treatment from the cradle is vital for people living with Down syndrome to reach their full potential and make meaningful contributions to the society. Experts say social inclusion and eradication of all forms of discrimination will bring out innate talents in these special group of people. Joel Popola will tell us more in this report. Down syndrome, according to medical expert, is a disorder that occurs due to chromosome imbalance, which usually affects the intellectual development of affected persons. The Down syndrome is obviously a congenital genetic abnormality, and it is not any, it's not what anybody did wrong. It's just unfortunate, uh, one of the chromosomal abnormalities. Apart from this, experts say there are other health challenges that affect their overall development. You know, which we as cardio cardiology and thoracic surgeon, we take care of them and we are able to fix those diseases or defects they have. And therefore, they can really live in a very normal life. You know? In spite of this setback, people living with Down syndrome can realize their full potential under the right atmosphere. Many parents who have children with the health disorder are oblivious of how to cater for them. However, these parents with children with special needs have been able to nurture their children to achieve their goals. The first thing one has to do, like we've always said, is acceptance. Acceptance, then love, and then the desire to educate and then inspire. Find out what, the cha what their talents are and encourage them in that regard. For these children living with Down syndrome, their condition has not dampened their hope. 
I said so, and I make makeup artists. The consensus of stakeholders is that more public enlightenment on the issue will change the unpleasant narrative of societal stigmatization and discrimination of people living with Down syndrome. In Lagos, Joel Pukbola, NCA News. And that's it from Lagos. Nationwide will continue with Lame in Abuja. Just stay tuned. Now, the federal government says it plans to adopt a youth-led initiative in its efforts to tackle the challenges of climate change with focus on its co-impact on youth population. This was part of Nigeria's intervention by the Minister of Youth Development, Jamila Bio Ibrahim, at the ongoing 42nd UNESCO General Conference in Paris, France. While emphasizing the need to support developing nations with essential financial resources, technical know-how and technology to transition into the green economy, the minister revealed that in Nigeria, climate change has impacted negatively on land and water resources leading to conflict, agricultural disruptions and displacements of communities. She added that those who bear the consequences the most are the youth who constitute about 70% of the Nigerian population, the largest in the African continent and the 10th in the global map. We now join Abubakar Akwanga, who is as the Secretariat of the All Progressives Congress, APC, for reactions on the verdict of the appeal court concerning the Kano governorship elections outcome. Hello, Akwanga, it's over to you. Lami Ali, thank you very much. Right now we are at the residence of the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, the largest uh, political party in Africa, at uh, Sokoro here in Abuja. And as we are all aware, earlier in the day, Court of Appeal has uh, affirmed the judgment of tribunal courts that sat uh, in Kano. We sacked the incumbent governor of Kano State, uh, Abba Yusuf, and uh, declared uh, his closest rival in the contest, who, is, uh, uh, who was a candidate of the All Progressives Congress for Kano State Governorship election in person of Dr. Gauna. Uh, today, history has been made in Kano, and it is remarkable. And uh, we all know that uh, the, 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 every part of uh, uh, the chairman's residency in Asokoro, as it is reflective in Kano, uh, in uh, jubilation over this judgment. But it will be proper for us to hear from the two-term uh, deputy governor, two-term governor, and now the national chairman of the largest political party in Africa, in person of Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje. Uh, you will be hearing from him now because uh, we'll be joining him in a moment to hear his reaction over the appeal court uh, judgment. Thank you very much. Uh, it's over to you, chairman. Uh, you are now speaking to Nigeria to, uh, of course, let them know how you feel or what this judgment feel, uh, means to you and the people of Kano, especially the, uh, those of the extraction of the All Progressives Congress. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. There's no doubt we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this very important uh, judgment. We have to thank the judiciary for providing good administration of justice despite all distractions that took place since the beginning of these trials. We have to thank the judiciary. There's no doubt this is a victory for democracy. It's a victory for APC. And it's a victory for the people of Kano State. We are well aware this is an indication that democracy has come to stay in Nigeria. Democracy, we can say, is matured in Nigeria. We have to thank all those stakeholders, even the political parties, even the 
NMPP that took us to the appeal court. We have to thank them because they are part of the process of democracy. There is no doubt after election you get litigation and the end result is always determined by the judiciary. For Kano State, this victory is for all of us. We are fully aware. We know what happened during the election. A lot of malpractices. And we took the issue to the tribunal. And by the grace of God, we got a fair judgment in favor of our great party, the APC. Now the government in power, the NMPP, decided to go to the Court of Appeal. And this morning, with the powers of God, the Court of Appeal affirmed the judgment of the lower court. And by so doing, our gubernatorial candidate, Dr. Nasru Isu Gauna, is the duly elected governor of Kano State. But we know probably they will go to the Supreme Court, which is part of democracy. There's nothing wrong for them to go to the Supreme Court. We too. We are ready to meet them at the Supreme Court. And inshallah, we'll win at the Supreme Court as well. But what we assure the people of Kano State, the good administration that we provided in my eight year of administration was my duty, Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gauna, and now the governor elect of Kano State will provide a similar, not even similar, I believe he will provide a better administration. More achievements will be recorded in Kano State because that is what we expect. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. We would now like to hear from Governor, the, the candidate, please briefly, maybe just a minute. How okay. do you feel about this judgment? Well, alhamdulillah, 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 whoever uh, goes to a court like this and uh, he was uh, given a judgment in his favor definitely has to be very happy. We are very happy and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, the court of appeal to affirm our victory. And um, I'm so happy, but yet I am still uh, deep in my thoughts because I have to sit down and think very well because of the confidence and the expectation of people on us and inshallah we are praying very well that we are not going to fail our people thank you very much uh uh, Governor-elect, I would say, <laughs> with uh, confidence, and then may Almighty Allah see you through. I think this is uh, where we would end a, a live interview with the national chairman and the governor-elect of uh, Kano State, as uh, declared by the appeal court. Thank you very much. Uh, Lami Ali, is back to you in the studio, if you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Akwanga, for that updates from the stakeholders of the APC in Kano State concerning the outcome of the appeal court ruling on Kano State governorship election. We now join Anwali in Benin for continuation of Nationwide. <laughs> You are welcome to Benin. Edo State Government is to set up an enforcement team to help check noise pollution across the state. 
Governor Gordon Obaski, who was represented by the State Commissioner for Environment, Joshua Mokojon, gave this hint while briefing government house correspondent after the weekly State Executive Council meeting. Good luck, Naini reports. Among the five policy trusts of the current administration is environmental sustainability, and the idea is to make the state conducive for general well-being of the people. To this end, the governor is warning business owners and organizations, especially owners of beer parlors, eateries, churches, and mosques, whose activities around residential areas have caused an increasing discomfort to residents living in those areas to desist from such acts. Government, he said, has finalized plans to constitute a noise pollution team that will help in enforcement. Mr. Governor gave us a marching order, especially with what we experienced in our retreat that as much as possible we should ensure that we erode the issue of noise pollution within the state. And to that end, what we have done immediately is to set up an enforcement team within the ministry to reach out to first and foremost advocates and let people know that the issue of noise pollution has become a major issue and the citizens themselves are also aware. He reminded the public of the Ado State Sanitation and Pollution Control Act 2010 that gives the state the powers to prosecute offenders. Whatever we are doing is backed by the law enacted by the state house person, they are signed by the executive governor of the then executive governor of Edo State. Mr. Gordon Obasiki came in in 2016, and this is a law that precedes him. So we are not in any way acting out of the law. He charged residents to report to relevant government ministry for necessary action. In Benin, good luck in any NT News. As the festive season is approaching and the roads are already getting busy, the need for transporters, motorists and individuals to abide by road safety rules and regulations is of utmost importance to curb the spike in traffic accidents and pedestrian deaths during the period. Elizabeth Omoko tells us more. No doubt. An increased human and vehicular movement usually characterize a festive period between mid-December and mid-January, with evidence of traffic gridlock on highways, among other activities. <laughs> it is also a period when many are struggling to meet up with end-of-year demands. This scenario plays out among some drivers who will throw caution to the wind and place priority on profits and subsequently lose their lives and that of passengers in accidents caused mostly by fatigue and carelessness. So we walk from morning till after two to three. They will not give motor to handover. That one will never get to know whether there is any fourthly. Provided the rush to make sure to, to go like eight, eight trip. Some of our drivers are so careless. When you drive, you're not supposed to receive call or make call. Over speed is still included. For road safety managers, it is imperative for every Nigerian, especially motorists, to exhibit high level of professional conduct by adhering to road safety rules and regulations. If you are driving in the night, you have impaired your safety. Speed, trees, but it kills. When you drink, it affects your mental state, it affects your physical body. So don't drink and drive. Many lives have been lost to road accidents. If we must drive to see another day, there is a general consensus that motorists must adhere to the driving rules on a daily basis. In Benin, Elizabeth Omako, NTN News. That's it from Benin. Nationwide will continue with Lamy in Abuja. Thank you so much, Anguli. Now, the Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Delia Lake, has assured communities hosting mining companies of fair deal in terms of developments. The minister gave the assurance as the unveiling of the revised guidelines for the production of community development agreements in the solid mineral sector in Abuja. The guidelines are developed by the Ministry and the African Centre for Leadership and Development. Nigeria, if we sanitize the environment of our mineral sector operation and ensure that the operators get maximum profit while the host communities also derive 
beneficiation that normally should go to them. And then government, the various levels of government, we have state, we have local, we have federal. And all normal taxes are paid. So at the end of the day, it behoves on all of us to ensure that we play our own part. We as the regulators will ensure enforcement of all these guidelines. Leadership in Africa. And the second, lack of strategy. And the third, inappropriate development approach. And you agree with me that the whole of Africa, we are blessed with enormous human and material resources. But all of these have not translated to development because of those three issues that we have identified as a center. We joined the Barbary in Port Harcourt to lead us on more stories on Nationwide from that soon. Hello, the Barbary. I mean, welcome to Port Harcourt. The Commissioner of Police River State Command, Tunji Disu, says the directive of the Inspector General of Police on zero tolerance to criminality is being tactically driven in the state as measures are being put in place, particularly around the major flashpoints, to ensure safety of lives and property. He said this in Ahoda East local government area, which recently witnessed increase in court activities. Emmanuel Lenin has details. That guard of honor signals the arrival and resumption of duty of the new River State Commissioner of Police, Tunji Disu. After the inspection of guard, the new CP exchanged pleasantries with the management of the River State Police Command. The new CP, while speaking with journalists, says he is familiar with the terrain. All I have to tell you at this particular moment is that I know the terrain, I will work with the people, I will partner with the people, and together we shall succeed. The CP thereafter went into a closed-door session with the management of the command. Meanwhile, as a mark of his commitment to ensuring peace and within the state of all criminal activities, the CP, upon resumption of duty, visited Ahoda West, where late DPU Bako and Bashim was killed. He met with the local government area chairman and DPU of Ahoda Division. I have been the one assisting the command to bring down crime in this place. I want you to know that we are going to support you as much as possible. CP Tunji Disu had served in various capacities in River State, including squad leader, anti kidnapping squad, DPO Elengu, Commander SAS, as well as Assistant Commissioner Police, State CID. In Port Harcourt, Emmanuel Lene. NTA News. The Nigerian Television Authority Port Harcourt Network Center has emerged the television station of the year at the just concluded Trend Setters Award in Port Harcourt. Joy Uzo, who covered the event, reports that the award is based on the station's outstanding performance in the outgoing year. The report. I am excited to be presenting this award for TV station of the year to Nigeria Television Authority, NTA. Thank you for helping push information and keeping Nigeria together. It is often said that hard work pays and recognizing commitment and resilience with a part on the back is a joy to pivotal in upholding organizational growth. This informed the choice of organizers of the Trendsetters Award in identifying outstanding performance. The emergence of NTA Port Arcot Network Center as a television station of the year 2023 is tied to the numerous achievements of the station in the outgoing year, improved programming, and the latest transition to 24 hours transmission formed the basis for the selection of NTA Port Arcot done through online voting as a television station of the year. This award is a well deserved award, especially now that we are on, on 24 hours transmission. I think we are doing the best. Every time goes to the Zonal Director, NTA Potako Network Center, Mr. Seville Nungusu, the management and the staff for the good work we have been doing. Organizers of the event say it is their own way of encouraging hard work and excellence. People nominate the award recipients and vote, voted for them. For this year, we had over 5 million votes. 
So it's not something we sit back and select people know. Other awardees also commended the initiative. Uh, we're doing something good and the public are aware, they are watching and they are happy with what we're doing. It was indeed a night of entertainment at its best. In Port Harcourt, Joy Uzo, NTA News. And that does it from Port Harcourt. The news will continue after the break in Abuja. Good evening. Thank you for staying tuned. In no distant time, secondary schools in the country will receive the desired attention and improvements, both in quality assurance and infrastructure. This assurance is coming from the Executive Secretary, National Secondary Schools Education Commission, Dr. Eleya Ajayi, who in a media briefing spoke on the efforts by the President's leadership to turn around the sector since assumption of office four months ago. He said some ongoing efforts include the development of a roadmap on revitalizing the sector, advocacy visits to states who control over 80% of secondary schools to have their buy-in to establish boards of secondary schools and audits of both public and private secondary schools and enrollments. A draft minimum standards for senior secondary education. This is the first time in the history of this country to regulate all activities of senior secondary schools in Nigeria. There is always a wide gap between what is stated in paper and implementation. As far as I remain the, the Executive Secretary, implementation will not be the problem. Like I told members of, of, of my staff, I'm not just here to warm my seat. Every month, I expect them to submit to my office what they have been able to achieve that month and what they plan to do in, in the following month. That is exactly what Mr. President is asking every one of us to do right now. Currently, Ministry of Education is working on getting 2% of the nation's consolidated revenue for the Commission to function optimally. Now still on education matters, St. Theresa's College in Suka Southeast has emerged winner of the 2023 Nils National Secondary Schools Quiz Competition on Legislature and Democracy that came to a climax with a grand finale as the National Assembly. Muhammad Rabi Ali reports that leadership of the 10th Assembly pledged to sustain the competition for developing young talents. It was quite a keenly contest among participating schools from six geopolitical zones of the country at the grand finale. The competition, which is the eighth, was designed to inculcate on the students the requisite knowledge of legislative process and procedure, as well as democratic governance generally. Begin to imbibe the right virtues. Listen to your teachers. Listen to your parents. And you will never go wrong. I therefore wish to assure you all that the leadership of the 10th National Assembly will ensure that this laudable initiative of the brainchild of NIL is sustained. Both private and public schools are represented in this quiz competition. Six schools slug it out at the grand finale, having made it from their respective zones. Why do some states have more members than others in the House of Representatives. Population. Is that because you're sure or you're just guessing? Pretty sure. Great, congratulations. That is the correct answer. St. Teresa from Nsuka clinched the first position, followed by Greater Tomorrow Ondo and School for the Gifted Gwagwalada FCT, who went home with second and third positions in that order. The National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies has pledged to sponsor the winning team for their final examinations and tertiary level education. From the National Assembly, Muhammad Rabiu Ali, NTA News. Now, the Nigeria Data Protection Commission has set a machinery in motion to enforce data subjects' rights and promote trust in Nigeria's digital economy ecosystem. A statement by the National Commissioner NDPC, Dr. Vincent Olatunji, indicates that in its recently disclosed guidance notice on filing data protection compliance audit returns, the Commission advises data controllers and processors to file compliance audit returns or risk being excluded from the whitelist of national data protection 
adequacy program. The data controllers and processors comprises banks, telcos, hospitals, schools, ICT companies, data centers, among others. It will be recalled that the National Commissioner NDPC, Dr. Vincent Olatunji, recently disclosed that the Commission is carrying out free induction training for designated data protection officers in both public and private sectors so as to ensure that Nigeria contributes competitively to the global digital economy. And next on our lineup is Sports Update with Ulumide Egunsola. Analysts are still reacting to the 1 1 draw score line between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and their counterpart from Lesotho. As the Eagles began their 2026 World Cup qualifiers on a shaky note, they urged handlers of the Nigerian football and the team managers to reappraise the team for better performance. It's just a disgrace that we had to manage to get a draw against Lesotho that is ranked 153rd in the world. Come on, we are more than this. So, uh, expectations. You just have to lower it. You have said something else. Something drastic is done. I believe that uh, learning from this game, Nigeria will still come out better and brighter in the game. Nigeria is now second on the log in Group C with one point. The team's next match is against Zimbabwe on Sunday. Still on football matters, preparations are in top gear for the 10th Nigeria Pitch Awards 2024. The organizers in Lagos said the awards, which is supported by the Nigerian Football Federation, will once again celebrate and honor excellence in the game of football in Nigeria. We have all it takes to rule the world as far as football is concerned. So Nigerian Pitch Awards as a platform simply want to first discuss the way forward. In surfing, the good times are here as the Nigerian Surfing Federation galvanizes efforts to popularize the sport amongst Nigerian athletes and spread their tentacles to other parts of the country. This is part of the motive behind the working visit of Omar Sey, the President, African Surfing Confederation to Nigeria. Now it's time for Africa. The surf is the, is the, is the, it gives a lot of opportunity for the African surfing development. We see the sport of surfing as a touristic adventure and uh, uh, we take most of our youths off the streets. His interactive session with officials of the Nigeria Olympic Committee, NOC, confirmed that Nigeria is set to host the rest of Africa with sports update Olumide Gutola NT News. And that's nationwide for today. Thank you for your time. Have a good evening.